it's Halloween. So obviously we've got to do something that involves Michael Myers. Well today, I bring you the history and origins of Michael Myers. Stay tuned. This is Comic In TV. Michael Myers was born on October 19th, 1957. However, in the comics it stated he was born on October 30th as a stillbirth, but then took his first breath on October 31st in 1957. Michael was babysat by his neighbor Mrs. Blankenship, who was a member of the Cult of Thorn in the 4 through 6 timeline. She would tell Michael stories about the Boogeyman and the true meaning of Halloween. In 1963, a six-year-old Michael Myers, while being babysat by Mrs. Blankenship as his sister was entertaining her boyfriend across the street, dressed as a clown and crossed the street to take the life of his older sister Judith on Halloween night. As a child, Michael claimed to have suffered from bizarre, inexplicable nightmares and heard a voice in his head that would tell him to do things. Michael was taken to Smith's Grove Sanitarium, where he became the patient of a psychiatrist named Dr. Sam Loomis. He spent 15 years with Dr. Loomis, barely moving, never speaking a word. Over the span of a decade, a string of bizarre deaths took place, each one involving a patient or staff member who had some form of interaction with Michael Myers. One of these murders was of Dr. Jennifer Hill, who Dr. Loomis was engaged to. It was this act which caused Dr. Loomis to stop trying to reach him and start making sure he never saw the light of day again. On October 30th, 1978, after Michael turned 21, he escaped from the sanitarium and returned to Haddonfield, Illinois to continue his murder spree. In cutscenes from the film, Myers destroyed his room in Smith's Grove and carved the word sister on his door before breaking out. He also released the other patients from their rooms. Driving across Illinois, Michael came across a tow truck and slaughtered its driver, taking with him the driver's boiler suit. On Halloween night that year, Michael killed three teenagers with plans to murder Lori Strode as well, but was stopped by Dr. Sam Loomis. Loomis shot Michael, causing him to fall from the second story window. But as Dr. Loomis runs to check on Michael, the body is nowhere to be found. The body count for the first film was only seven. These deaths were Judith Myers being stabbed nine times, Christopher Hastings the mechanic, a stray dog Michael had eaten, the Wallace's dog that Michael had strangled, Annie Brackett whose throat Michael had slit, Bob Sims who was stabbed and pinned to a door, and Linda Vanderklok who was strangled with a telephone cord. In Halloween 2 we learn that Lori was adopted by the Strodes and that she's actually Michael's sister. It's never mentioned in continuity what became of the Myers parents. Halloween 2 takes place immediately after the first film, as Lori is taken to a hospital, where she appears to be in shock before Michael finds her. In a last desperate attempt to end his massacre, Dr. Loomis tries to kill Michael in an explosion. This causes Michael to catch fire, and the same incident burns half of Loomis's body. Michael's kill count in Halloween 2 comes to 9. Of those kills, Michael stabbed Alice Martin in the chest with a butcher knife, slit Deborah Lane's throat, hit Mr. Garrett in the head with a claw hammer, strangled Bud Scarlatti with a cord, drowned and scalded Nurse Bailey in a boiling hot tub, stabbed Dr. Mixer in the eye with a syringe, injected Nurse Marshall with an air bubble, drained Nurse Alves' blood by severing an IV line, stabbed Nurse Franco in the back with a scalpel and slit the throat, a Marshall Gummel with a scalpel. On May 25th, 1979, Lori was attacked by a knife-wielding clown at a costume graduation party. The man, who she realized was her brother, chased her through the back streets of Haddonfield before stopping outside Jimmy's house. Lori watched in horror as the clown entered the house and snapped Jimmy's neck. With the help of Dr. Loomis, Lori subsequently faked her death in a car accident, taking on the alias Carrie Tate and moving away from Haddonfield. In continuity, 
Halloween 4 begins an alternate timeline where Lori Strode had died and her daughter Jamie Lloyd had been taken in by the Carruthers family. Ten years after the first two films, the comatose Michael Myers was sent to Ridgemont Federal Sanitarium until October 30th, 1988, when he was arranged to transfer back to Smith's Grove. He escaped after discovering he had a niece. Michael is a bearer of the Curse of Thorn, which is an ancient, dark, supernatural phenomenon that bestowed great power upon someone who was inflicted with its curse, dating back to the times of the Druids. Michael is shot multiple times by police and a mob of armed citizens at a cemetery and falls into a mine shaft. Just before the mob attempts to blow him up by dropping a grenade into the shaft with him, Michael escapes through a hole at the bottom and washes out into a creek where he's rescued by a hermit and then falls into a coma. In Halloween 4, Michael's body count adds up to 17. Michael drove his thumb into attendant Jay Black's forehead and killed L. Evans and two paramedics in unknown ways. Michael impaled a mechanic with a metal rod and killed a waitress in an unknown manner. He threw Bucky into a metal transformer. No, no, not that Bucky. Ripped apart three police officers and mangled Deputy Logan. Michael then pinned Kelly Meeker to a wall with a shotgun and snapped Brady's neck. He stabbed Orrin Gateway in the back and then threw him off a moving truck, followed by stabbing Big Al in the stomach and ridding him the same way. Michael threw Unger from the moving truck as well and ripped Earl Four's neck open. Halloween 5 picks up where 4 left off and then takes place one year later as Jamie is recovering from temporarily being possessed by the Curse of Thorn, having killed her foster mother. Michael awoke from his coma and began his murder spree once again on his way to hunting down Jamie. Dr. Loomis shot Michael full of tranquilizers before finally beating him unconscious with a plank of wood. Michael was then taken into custody by the Haddonfield police and prepared to be transferred to a maximum security facility by the National Guard. However, the Cult of Thorn caused for his escape by opening fire on the police station, slaughtering all who were in it. The Cult took Michael and Jamie and then escaped. Michael's body count in Halloween 5 was 12. He stabbed the hermit in the back with a knife, stabbed Rachel Crothers in the chest with a pair of scissors, stabbed Mike in the face with a garden claw, impaled Spitz with a pitchfork, sliced open Samantha's stomach with a scythe, stabbed deputies Ross and Ferris several times with a pitchfork, stabbed Tina Williams in the chest with a butcher knife, slammed Deputy Gray's face into a steering wheel several times, hung Deputy Block with a noose, and killed Dr. Hart and Nurse Patsy in unknown ways. Presumed dead, rumors began to circulate of Michael's existence, and many violent deaths were unofficially attributed to him. Dr. Loomis dutifully continued his search for Michael, with the somewhat skeptical help of Marion Chambers. Loomis's insistence that Michael Myers was to blame for almost every crime in Illinois gained him an unfavorable reputation among the state authorities, who came to regard him like the boy who cried wolf. Knowing that Loomis was tracking his movements, on Halloween 1989, Michael played a game with his former doctor. He left a clue on Loomis's map pointing to Haddonfield Elementary School. It was here that Michael brutally murdered a school teacher. In 1991, Michael stalked a young beauty queen who was named Miss Haddonfield in 1991. Mere moments after she was elected, he attacked her in her dressing room and decapitated her with a knife. Her corpse was found staring at itself in her dressing room mirror. In 1993, photojournalist Patrick Carter was given an assignment to prove that Michael Myers was still alive. Carter began following Sam Loomis in Haddonfield in hopes that he would somehow lead him to the killer. One rainy day, while stalking Loomis from a distance, Carter was brought face to face with his obsession when Michael Myers appeared in front of him. Michael cut his throat before stabbing him to death. When Dr. Loomis heard of Carter's death, he decided to take Marion's advice and move with her to Langdon, Illinois. The Curse of Michael Myers is part of two alternate timelines as well, as there's a producer's cut and a director's cut, both completely different. Six years after the events of Halloween 5, Terrence Wynn, who led the Cult of Thorn and was in charge over Smith's Grove, had taken Jamie and Michael to the sanitarium to perform experiments on them. In one version, Jamie is impregnated at the age of 15 through artificial insemination. In the other version, Michael rapes his niece as part of the cult's ritual. In one version, Michael rebelled against the cult and slaughtered them and then was pumped full of drugs and beaten unconscious by Tommy Doyle with a pipe. It's in this version 
that it suggested that Michael kills Dr. Loomis at the end off screen. However, in the alternate version, Michael is stopped by a circle of ruins used by Tommy. After Tommy and the others escape, Dr. Loomis stays to confront Michael and Wynn. However, Wynn traded places with Michael, exchanging clothes. Loomis prepares to kill who he thinks is Michael, but discovers it to be Wynn. Wynn transfers the Mark of Thorn over to Loomis, making him the cult's new leader. Because of the two alternate versions of the curse of Michael Myers, some of the murders are different. In the director's cut, Michael's kill count is 17, while in the producer's cut, his kill count is only 8. In the director's cut, Michael impales Mary's head on a spike, snapped a motorist's neck, impaled Jamie on tractor harrows, and ripped her apart, axed Deborah Strode in the chest, stabbed John Strode in the chest with a butcher knife, and then electrocuted him with a fuse box, gutted Barry Sims with a butcher knife, slit Tim Strode's throat with a butcher knife, stabbed Beth repeatedly, gutted a sanitarium patient, hacked six doctors including Wynn and one nurse with a machete, and crushed another doctor's head against metal bars. In the producer's cut, however, Michael didn't kill Wynn or the other five doctors and nurse, and completely removed the other doctor's head rather than crushing it against metal bars. Also in the producer's cut, Jimmy survived Michael's attack only to be killed by Wynn in the hospital. Four years later, merging the 4 through 6 timelines with the H2O timeline, Michael begins searching for Tommy Doyle to exact his revenge. It's not clear which Halloween 6 timeline this takes place in though. Tommy eventually encountered Michael as Michael was about to kill him and shot Michael multiple times but it had no effect. Tommy eventually lit Michael on fire and then knocked him out the window with a chair. Eventually, while in a church, Tommy and Lee Brackett electrocuted Michael, causing the church to explode. Tommy was able to escape, however Lee Brackett was killed when Michael stabbed him in the chest. Surviving the last encounter with Tommy, Michael would later discover that his sister, Lori Strode, was actually alive. In early 1995, Loomis suffered a heart attack and was hospitalized at the hospital. Loomis awoke in the middle of the night to find Michael standing over him. Michael had kidnapped Elizabeth Worthington, an old acquaintance of Loomis's. He cut off her hand and brought her to the hospital with him. Michael presented the doctor with a plastic bag containing the severed hand and bloodstained photographs from Loomis's past. Loomis looked up in horror to see Elizabeth tied to a chair in front of him, beaten and gagged. He attempted to stop Michael but was knocked to the floor and forced to watch as Michael removed Elizabeth's eyeball with his knife. Hysterical, Loomis mocked Myers, claiming that his eternal mission to relive Judith's murder was futile since his only other sister had perished in a car crash. Michael left the room and as Loomis untied his former love, he found the words Carrie Tate carved into her back. Before dying of coronary failure, Loomis realized that Michael knew, and had always known, that Laurie Strode was still alive. On October 30th, 1998, Michael broke into the Langdon home of Marion Whittington, formerly Marion Chambers. Eventually, Michael discovered that he had a nephew and where his sister and her son were. Michael tracked Laurie, now Carrie Tate, to Hillcrest Academy, a boarding school in Summer Glen, California, where she worked as the headmistress. Lori confronted him head on, stabbing him multiple times and pushing him off a balcony as he lay unconscious. Ronald, who survived his shooting and believed Michael to be already dead, stopped Lori from finishing him off. Off screen, as the police arrived at Hillcrest, Michael awoke and attacked a paramedic who was about to move his body. He crushed the man's larynx, rendering him mute and unconscious, and switched clothes with him. Unconvinced that her brother was dead, Carrie took an axe a policeman's gun, and stole the ambulance she thought her brother's body was in. As the confused paramedic regained consciousness in the back of the van, Carrie deliberately crashed the vehicle, sending them both crashing down a hill and trapped the man underneath the van. She prepared to finish Michael Myers off once and for all, and after pausing momentarily when the masked man showed a glimpse of humanity, mercilessly chopped his head off with an axe. As all of this went on, the real Michael slipped off into the woods. Sometime after his failure to kill Carrie, Michael returned to Illinois and began living in Russellville, specifically the remote former home of Charlie Bowles. 
the man who had murdered his family with the hacksaw in 1963. In 2001, Lori, with the help of Terrence Wynn, took up her brother's mantle. She was at Smith's Grove Sanitarium and watched as Tommy Doyle escaped back to his hometown. Lori followed him and made a stop at the graveyard and dug up the corpses of her friends Annie, Linda, and Bob. She placed the bodies and tombstones in the Wallace home and set them up for Lindsay to find. Once everything was in place, Lori waited for her moment to strike, which came when Tommy and Lindsay discovered the bodies. Lori stabbed Tommy in the chest and then went after Lindsay, who made her way to the Myers home. Lori followed after her and found her in Judith's room, combing her hair just like Judith did the night she was murdered. Lindsay tried to reason with Lori, still thinking it was Michael, and told him that both Judith and Lori were now dead while reaching for Lori's knife. This had no effect on Lori, who slammed Lindsay against the glass and was about to stab her, but was stopped. First from Lindsay stabbing her in the eye with a glass, and then by a bullet from Tommy's gun. Tommy ran over and unmasked Lori and was shocked to discover it was his old babysitter. Lori tackled Tommy and then fell from the second floor window as she stabbed him in the neck, killing him. Lindsay witnessed all that happened and Lori was later sent to Smith's Grove. Four weeks later, Lindsay came to check on Lori and was told that she had not moved or spoken since the night she killed Tommy. Dr. Blotch explained to Lindsay that he believed that Lori wanted to relive the terror of what happened to her and thus became him. Lindsay asked for a moment alone while she continued to think about what drove the Myers family to do all their murderous acts. All the while, Terrence Wynn looked on. As for Lori, she simply stared outside her window just like her brother used to when he was at Smith's Grove. Back in the H2O timeline, after killing an innocent man, the guilt-stricken Carrie Tate had been arrested and sent to Grace Anderson's sanitarium, where she resumed her old name, Lori. She was believed to be in a catatonic state by the nurses, but was secretly preparing for her brother's inevitable return. Michael finally appeared on Halloween 2001, killing two security guards to get to his sister. Lori lured him onto the roof of the institution, where he became caught in the trap she had laid for him. Michael dangled over the edge of the roof, and Lori mockingly told him she was no longer afraid of him. As she prepared to cut his rope, Michael feigned confusion, grabbing at his mask, much like the paramedic she killed had. Unable to risk taking another innocent life, Lori hesitated and attempted to remove Michael's mask to be sure. Michael took advantage of this, grabbing his sister and stabbed her in the back. Lori defied her brother one last time, kissing his mask before falling off the roof to her death. Michael framed an inmate at the sanitarium, Harold Trumbull, by giving him his knife. Sometime after killing Lori, Michael began stalking Lindsay Wallace one of the survivors of Halloween 1978. In 2002, however, his childhood home was invaded by an entrepreneur named Freddie Harris, who planned to host an internet reality show in the legendary Myers house. All but two of the reality show's participants were killed. They escaped the massacre by trapping Michael in the burning garage. Michael's charred body was recovered and taken to the morgue, where he regained consciousness. Following Michael's visit the year earlier, Lindsay Wallace had been admitted to Smith's Grove Sanitarium due to her claims that Michael Myers was after her. She was treated by Dr. David Loomis, the son of Sam Loomis. On Halloween night, 2003, Michael returned to Smith's Grove, murdering a security guard and two nurses in his search for Lindsay. Lindsay's corpse was later found strung up in a pumpkin patch like a scarecrow with various knives stuck in her body. In Halloween H2O, Michael committed six murders. He embedded an ice skate into Jimmy Howell's face, stabbed Tony Allegri in the back with a butcher knife, slit the throat of Nurse Marion Whittington, slit Charles' throat with a corkscrew, dropped a dumbwaiter on Sarah's leg, and then stabbed her in the back multiple times. He then stabbed Will Brennan in the back with a butcher knife. In Halloween Resurrection, Michael Myers committed 11 murders. He decapitated Franklin Monroe, slashed Willie Haynes' throat with a butcher knife, stabbed Lori Strode in the back with a butcher knife, then dropped her off a rooftop, impaled Charlie Albin's neck with a tripod leg, stabbed Bill Woodlake in the head with a butcher knife, impaled Don on a metal pole, decapitated Jenna with a butcher knife, crushed Jim's skull, stabbed Rudy with three butcher knives, hung Nora with a cable noose, 
and impaled her to the ceiling with a butcher knife and then killed the female nurse at the morgue. If we count all the movies so far as one timeline, not including Rob Zombie's remakes and not including the comic books or novels, as well as the 2018 reboot, then Michael Myers' kill count adds up to 79 if we count using the director's cut of Curse of Michael Myers. If we count the producer's cut, the kill count only adds up to 71 by Michael. To put that into perspective, Freddy Krueger has a kill count of 38 and Jason Voorhees has a kill count of 152 total between films. Given that I filmed this before the new Halloween 2018 movie came out, the history and origins only contains the information that we have at the current time. So there you have it my friends, on this Halloween episode of Come Again TV's History and Origins, we took a look into the life of Michael Myers. Enjoy your trick-or-treating tonight. Hold your loved ones close. Don't go near any babysitters. Make sure your doors are locked and that you're always within reaching distance of some kind of weapon because you never know what evil lurks out in the night. I'm Shannon for Come Again TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button right there so you can stay up to date on all things geek culture. Also, you can check out one of these two playlists right here on the side for more videos just like the one you just watched.